What is up all you beautiful people and welcome to another episode of this beautiful road to max series I hope you guys are just as excited as I am because man oh man Do we make a lot of gains in this episode and if you guys didn't watch episode one or two I highly suggest going and watching those I'm telling loads of beautiful memories and hilarious stories throughout this entire season so you guys definitely are going to want to check that out. Last time <laughs> I told a story about how I learned about the RuneScape economy outside of the general store. So you guys don't want to miss that. And of course, if you end up enjoying today's episode, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn that bell notification icon on. And without further ado, let's get in to that beautiful content. Okay, I am done collecting crafting supplies for now. I obviously don't have everything, but I'm getting to the point now where I'm running into people also doing the same thing I am. So, over 500 buckets of sand. I don't really care about these two being even because I have 759 seaweed. I would like to obviously get the Clue Hunter and finish a couple of quests like the Night Sword, Tree Known Village, Stronghold, Fighter, you know, the Feud. Specifically for Cosmic Runes, so that if I want to leave Winter Tot, I can just... Teleport back with a games necklace. A waterfall, Druidic Ritual, Priest in Peril, Dig Site, Elemental Workshop Part 1 and 2. And I want to work towards getting that full graceful. So that will be really nice. Those are the short term goals. For the account at the moment, I'm going to go buy some runes so I can start to do some of these quests. Okay, the runes have been acquired. It is time to go do the fight arena quest, I think. That's what we're gonna do first. Forgot that your safe spot goes away after each killing of the NPC in there. They just reset you. There are with 1200 attack experience and 2000 theming experience and 1000 coins, up to 29 attack from 8 and up to 29 thieving. We also just advanced 5 combat levels. We managed to go all the way up to 11 magic and 11 HP during that quest. And here we are completing the Tree Gnome Village. Honestly, an amazing quest for really any account. Unlocking the Spirit Trees as a transportation method is super nice. And we get a best in slot necklace, plus 13 stab slash and crush bonus for us defensively. All the way up to 35 attack and 15 combat. Very, very nice. Alrighty, here we are with Witch's Potion done, and that actually is going to get me over 13 magic. So now we have access to Fire Strike, and our Wind Strike is going to be hitting a lot of damage now. I love that they changed how that worked and added Elemental Weakness, because it gives all the different elements instead of just Fire being the default best a use. And here we are completing the Knight's Sword quest. Beautiful amount of smithing experience all the way up to 29 smithing. Almost 400 total level. And here we are completing Druidic Ritual quest. And that will put us over 400 total level. And unlock the Herbal skill for us. That is absolutely beautiful. And here we are completing the feud. I'm going to be honest, the tough guy has no business having 80 magic as a level. Just makes <laughs> It just makes his magic defense so abysmal. I just spawned him like two or three times, but that is okay. We were able to finally complete the quest. Get an Adamid Scimitar, 15,000 theming experience. And that is going to be 37 theming for us. I'm going to do his trader minigames. Just so I can unlock the rune store and everything so that I can enchant stuff. And I also have this easy clue that I was actually able to do while killing goblins while trying to get a chef's hat. Let's go ahead and slap it open. Okay, we got <laughs> five blue fire lighters and 38 minor runes. It is a collection lock slot. So I will take it, but that is bad. I have not had an easy clue that bad in a while. Alright, the rune trader mini portion is done. So it's on a lot of bloods. I bought 66 Cosmics and 20 Larns. We've got about 40k cash left. This cat is almost done growing. So that'll be another 200 death runes for us. I'm going to work on enchanting some of the jewelry that I have. And then I think I'm going to work on some more quests. Okay, that feels super nice. Got a full inventory of games necklaces ready to go. 
going to keep the rest of the cosmic runes for when I get the level to do emerald jewelry, which I'm not too far off, only three levels away. Also completed the blackjack portion of the rogue trader mini quest for Ali as well. So now he sells offensive blackjacks. Okay, I am finally done jungle potion. This quest literally took me like 25 minutes. And we are really close to 10 herbalore, which is what I want for the dig site quest. So I'm gonna go kill some men, try and get some guams, get that to 10, and then do the dig site. Now that is a very nice magic little. That is a 25 we can now teleport to Varok. I'll still honestly probably be using the Chronicle for a while to get to Varok because it is just so much cheaper. Okay, I ended up getting three Marantils, which is completely fine because you never can have enough anti-poison. Uh, I am working on gathering the Clue Hunter outfit for Winter Tot while I'm over here. And then we're going to be doing the dig site because I have everything else now. And here we are completing the dig site. Honestly, absolutely massive to just get this quest done early on. 44 quest points, 32 mining, and 17 herbore. It is time now for me to go do Elemental Workshop Part 1 and 2 and also turn these certificates in over in Varrock. Okay, here we are completing the murder mystery quest. I needed a few more crafting levels for Elemental Workshop, and that should put us right at 20. Plus, we also got 2,000 gold, so that is nice. All right, that completes Elemental Workshop Part 1 for us. We have the Elemental Shield, going to be massive all the way up to 26 crafting. And we also are up to 32 smithing, and now we have the requirements to do Elemental Workshop Part 2. And here we are completing the Dwarf Cannon quest. Very nice. 750 crafting experience. Always love to see free crafting experience. And now we can craft Emerald Rings, which is going to be so nice. We can craft a lot of teleport jewelry now, so I'm very excited about that. And here we are completing Elemental Workshop Part 2. 15,000 experience split evenly between crafting and smithing. 50 quest points now and that is 36 smithing and 32 crafting honestly love to see it and there we are with waterfall quest completed shooting us all the way up to 30 strength from level 1 and 40 attack absolutely beautiful and we've got an inventory full of dueling rings now god honestly it feels so nice to just have these so early on along with the game's necklaces so i'm gonna go do priest and peril i need to mine some rune essence for that first but then we're gonna start working on some agility and there we are with a priest in peril complete unlocking mauritania for us and we got a lot of prayer experience i think over double what we previously had because we only did the restless ghost quest that puts us all the way up to 50 Teen prayer. Well, I gotta say, that was a new way that I have died. <laughs> I was doing the Taurus trap and I ran off a bit too far away from the captain and I clicked to attack him, and then next thing I knew, I was uh, stun locked with a guard. And I knew I was gonna die right there. Um, yeah, I thought I survived initially, uh, but I didn't, so that sucks. That's okay. Like I said, I didn't really care about the hardcore status. Uh, that was just very interesting that it puts you in a stun lock like that and then you just die. So, oh well. Uh, I'm going to complete the Taurus Trap, hopefully. I'm going to go get my stuff back and uh, we'll see. Oh yeah, there's... I can just get my stuff back. I don't think uh, I don't think I have to do anything else. Okay, I'm definitely going with agility here. I do not want to have to do any of the Alcred agility course, and that will put us right at 30 for the Varok rooftop course. I have done a lot of quests today, and this quest is really nice because now we can make dark tips, and it is two quest points. And there we are with 40 thieving. I want to start training some of my farming and a little bit more of my herb lore. I would ideally like to get my farming up to 25 before I start opening any winter tot crates. So, so I kind of just want to get that out of the way. 
a there we are with 25 construction i am just working on getting some construction up before we head over to winter tot of course i also am working on farming and i would like to get the easy diary done for kevos because once we get the easy diary done that allotment and whole farming area basically will no longer be able to be disease so i want to get that done since we're going to be training farming anyway just makes sense <laughs> i the luck honestly just continues and i don't know if it's in like a good way or not to be completely honest but earlier i got a seaweed spore which is essentially one out of 1900 and then I just got a Snapdragon Seed, and at my farming level, that's 1 out of 6,750. That is actually insane luck. Like, oh my gosh, what is this account doing? Wow. Okay, this will be the last inventory I do over at Master Farmers. We should have enough seeds now to get to my 25 goal. That is 45 thieving. And here we are with 40 mining. Absolutely beautiful. I am going to get one more level. I still am doing some farm runs. We have 20, almost 21. So we're pretty close. And like I said earlier, I should have enough seeds to get that level. Okay, it is time to work on some wood cutting and fire making as I continue to finish up farming and herb lore. I'm just going to be chopping right here and burning along here. So that will be super easy. All right, I had to come over here for a beginner clue and figured I might as well just go ahead and complete this quest. There we are with 55 quest points and let's go ahead and see if we can get any unique. We did not, but we got some more sardines for the cats. And there we are with a 25 farming, hitting my goal for winter Todd. and anything that we get beyond this is just extra and is gonna be really nice for getting those Ranar seeds from Winter Todd. Okay, I'm sure you guys saw in the last clip that I did have an easy casket with me, but I was in the middle of a farm run, so let's go ahead and open it up. Honestly, Black Axe would be really nice. We got 5k cash, I am not going to complain about that. And there we are getting 30 fletching, one of the few goals I had left before the Winter Todd grind. I am up to 33 fire making, and I'm going to be heading over to Teats once I hit 35. But first, I should be able to hit my last goal of at least 20 herb. I have 70, almost 80 guams in the bank, and I've got one last round of those herbs to collect from the next farm run, and then should very easily very easily hit 20 plus herb lore. Okay, here we are finishing up 50 fire making. Very nice. Cannot wait to get over to Winter Tot. And we also got all the way up to 49 wood cutting as well. And of course, you know, we grew another cat, so it's time to go turn this in for another 200 death runes. Here we are doing some herb lore before our tot grind, so hopefully we can get more Ranars. And there we are with 20. I've got 56 more potions to go, so we're at least going to get another level or two. Okay, I am all ready for Winter Tot, and honestly, pretty excited we're coming here. I guess kind of this late into the account. I know typically it's something that people do almost immediately, but I do like to get my skills up so these supply boxes are not absolutely trash. So let's go ahead and get started on this beautiful grind. Just a few games in and we are already 55 fire making. Levels are coming in quick, honestly you love to see it. There we are with 60 fire making and 700 total level. So I think for the crates, I'm just going to do openings every 50, sort of like I did with Temporos, that way it's not just like every clip's just a box opening. Honestly, Tot is just so good for those early fletching levels. There we are with 35. There we are with a 65 fire making. Honestly, going so, so fast. Here we are coming in with another fletching level. That is a 40. We can now make willow longbows and battle staffs. Very nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is a time for another story. And this one still is fire making related, but it is different. So 
I know I told you all about how I used to wake up ridiculously early on school days at 4.30 a.m. with my buddy Colin to train fire making. But I didn't tell you where or some of the dumb stuff that I got to watch happen when I was training fire making. So there was a really popular place to train a couple skills and that was Rogue's Den. There was a guy that you could talk to really close to a fire and lock him into place and a lot of people would cook there. I, however, used it for fire making because the line was just so long and you could easily do two to three lines at once, so that's where I did my fire making. But for those of you who don't know, back in the day, there wasn't a chest there for banking. There was just the guy who would roam around. And like I said, you could lock him in a place next to the fire and then use him for cooking. Well, if you weren't cooking and you wanted to troll, <laughs> something that some people would do is they would talk to the guy and then hurry up and run away when it would unlock him from where he was currently locked at for the cookers. And if you had your private chat on, you probably got flamed. <laughs> I knew a couple of my friends that would do this on purpose and they would just world hop and do it. And I got to tell you, they would make a lot of people mad. But it was also a great place where people would show off their like skill capes and skilling outfits. And I remember back in the day that's just like when you saw someone with a 99 cape and it was pretty rare back then, you would just ask them to do their their emotes or like emote please or emote plucks and that's something that you don't really see anymore. And I remember like going up to people and asking and because there, I mean, there were skill capes that I didn't know about. Like specifically, I remember Slayer being one of them, or Construction being one of them, or Herblore, like even Rune Crafting. Like those, those capes where you did not see them a lot back in the day. So I just remember asking, and I, man, when you went to a '99 party, you took out all of your '99 capes, and you just showed off every single emote. And it was a lot of fun. I remember attending a lot of 99 parties and pulling out like all of my 99 capes and just being proud and, and feeling accomplished for <laughs> something so simple as just like clicking in a game. But back then, man, it, it I don't know. It was just different. It really was. Here we are coming in as long as a winter tot will stop hitting me. I'm getting absolutely wrecked this game with. 70 fire making this is gonna be really nice i didn't expect to uh get this today but here we are and it looks like i'll actually be able to open 50 crates today so that will be super nice and there we are with 30 farming i wanted to go ahead and get that level before we opened up the 50 crates because the higher farming level that i have the better chance i have at getting those higher end seeds so it's time to open up those 50 crates all right it is time for 50 crate openings now i did get about 800 to 900 points per, per supply crate so honestly i should be getting some good rolls here there we are with some burnt pages oh ranar snapdragons adventos some mahogany seeds absolutely beautiful honestly love to see all of that i'm just gonna be slotting everything in and we'll do a giant price check at the total end here magic logs good good definitely want those Ooh, three snape snape grass seeds very good very good oh we got our first piece of warm clothing of the pyromancer we got the warm gloves let's go ahead and slot that in there we also have some pages i i told my buddy gabe i was like watch me get the dragon axe <laughs> Like that would, ooh, there we go, Bruma Torch, all right. Very nice. Nothing uh, else too exciting when those 10. We've got 20 left. I didn't get the Tome of Water from Temporo, so I definitely am expecting to get it here, just because that's how RNG works. <laughs> so hopefully. Hopefully I can end up getting that. All right, the last 10 for us at the moment. Another Bruma Torch. Once we get our third one of those, we won't be able to get those anymore. And I think instead we'll get Magic Seeds, which will be nice. 
So let's go ahead and take a look here. I know this isn't everything because I've got stuff scattered throughout the bank, but five Ranar seeds. Yes, please. I also have some Snapdragon seeds over here. Six of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got some Guam leaves as well. Very nice. Very nice. And our cash stack is up to 127k. Very, very good opening. All right, all you beautiful people. That is going to wrap it up for today's episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I truly, truly appreciate it. And of course, I have to give a special thank you and shout out to my channel members. We have Sir Otterman at the third age tier. We have Tom at the crystal tier. We have Father Dua and Liz Lemon at the Master tier, and we have Elaine at the Elite tier. Thank you all so much for going above and beyond and supporting the channel. And for the rest of you, thank you all so much for continuing to support the channel and the series. And myself, I truly, truly appreciate it. And you guys, make sure you stay tuned because the next time we are finishing Winter Tot, and we're going to start that early mid-game grind for the Iron Man account. I can't wait. I'll see you all next time.